Of course, nobody believes in the snuff film. It's just too sick to be real, right? Nobody in their right mind would actually produce such evidence against him like that, let alone make money off of it. <laughs> in fact, Al, uh, Al Goldenstein, publisher of Screw Magazine, has a standing offer of one million American dollars for whoever can find or prove that a real snuff film was commercially sold. The offer has been in place for years, yet nobody has claimed it. And, of course, for good reason. I mean, you don't buy a carton of cigarettes and sell them for half a third of a price, do you? Besides, as far as I know, nobody has ever taken one of these films home, seeing as they aren't sold as everybody thinks. That's too much of a risk. You pay to view screenings of it, like a movie theater. Nobody's ever held a copy of these films except for those few people who make money off of it. As far as I know, there are only three. All male. Actually, the only female involved in these movies are the victims. Not all the movies contain rape or sex of any kind, but it's not uncommon, especially with the few starring children as victims. This may all sound a bit odd to a lot of you, but of course it does. It involves something that just can't exist. It's something that's too mentally deranged to exist. It is, though. It's, it's very hard to attend one of these screenings. You need to be invited, and everyone who's ever been invited was invited by personal mail, i.e. not via the postal service. The letters are apparently drenched in some chemical that makes the paper dissolve after a certain amount of time outside the envelope. Possibly in contact with air or light, I don't know. All I know is that these people are clever. They take their measures. If they knew who I am, they'd surely kill me. Maybe even make me into a movie star. Then, I'd be shown to their little cinema. It's quite a dark place, seeing as the only lights are candles situated around the screening room. The entrance to the snuff cinema is a decrepit old factory, reminiscent of a slaughterhouse simply there to set the mood. The letter would have some sort of instructions on how to get to the screening room as well. The projector itself is apparently hooked up to a recently bought DVD player and is powered by a car battery. I've been told that they use small gas engines back in the 30s. The chairs are the same as the old tables that were once used in the slaughter benches. As soon as the screening is over, all the guests, maximum of 10 or so, are threatened to leave immediately. Though, three different exits within three 30 minute intervals. The exits are different from the entrance. They lead to underground tunnels, probably old sewers or walkways, that lead to back alleys at different parts of the city. The crew, i.e. the people with the film, quickly vanish, probably through a fourth exit. If you manage to find the screening room after a screening, you wouldn't know it was ever used for anything like that. It just looks like a walk-in freezer with white walls, meat hooks, still on the ceiling, and of course, the tables. Still, obvious marks of dried blood, probably from the meat. There are about 120 snuff films to be viewed in this just this one cinema. There are probably more throughout the world. Each categorized by victim, method of killing, whether sex is involved, and whether it takes place pre- or post-mortem, and by the level of brutality. At least one film is of young blonde women being choked to death while performing unwilling blowjobs. Another is of young children being cut open while drugged just enough not to move, but enough to still audibly and visibly be awake. Yet. Another is a man being hung upside down on a meat hook, having his testicles removed with a machete and force-fed them before he dies from the blood loss. I could go on and on about these movies, as I've seen a good portion of them. Why not? I had the money for it. The goriest films I've ever seen was that of a middle-aged, dark-haired woman having her hands and feet and legs amputated while drugged, then sewn them crudely back to the wrong extremities. The next cut showed her wiggle and terror as she tried standing up on her arms and feet until she collapsed and vomited. The door behind her opened and a male figure swung an aluminum baseball bat at her head. 
unpacked, her head bent, and she let out a grueling cry as she went limp and silent. The angle the camera changed to the man who hit her with the bat, and it, well, he hit her again. This time, busting it open with debris of brain matter, a crying child was then shown eating her eyes. It was the most... <laughs> satisfying movie I've ever seen. Now, you may think that I may have some type of great, you know, revelation or some great resolution to this story. The fact is, if they want you, they'll take you somewhere. They'll kill you in the most brutal way you've ever seen. And then they'll clean it, dump the body somewhere else, and move on. It'll be just like another murder. Except... You'll be a movie star before you die. 